little tiger like massages my legs, makes my toenails black, and then I feel like Nathan Explosion from Death Clock. So that's on the number one touring tip. Get a pedicure before you go, and then you don't have to even worry about your toenails. You don't have to f***ing touch them. That's f***ing perfect, man. You like to see the sensitive metal guy, right? Everybody loves that, don't they? I'm like secretariat of metal and have black toenails and like I just walk around and like Ozzy Osbourne one day I know I'm gonna be so crazy that like I can't even talk anymore but I can f***ing fly like it will be rad I'll just wander about no one can stop me no one can do anything I'll just show up wherever I want to I can buy whatever I want. You can have bat wings. Yeah, yeah. I can have bat wings and I'm, I, I'm like the best musician in the world that's the can promise dream, right? And I wasn't dissing on Ozzy. He's a genius. He's the biggest genius that ever lived. Beethoven, maybe. Beethoven went deaf and wrote the ninth. If you can make me that guy, that'd be, that'd be even better. I actually went and saw Ozzy, Mike Borden on drums, Zach Wilde on guitar, f***ing awesome. Oh, yeah. Zach Wilde's a f***ing amazing guitar player. You know who I met last night? Yeah. I met Slash, which is, that's the guy. And I was really, really drunk, and I was hanging out with uh, Dave Lombardo and, like, Josh Holmes. <laughs> it was like a wreck. It was like a, it was like a train wreck for, like, all, all the guys that, like, come out of the undersea. It's not like Queens or, like, yeah. uh, Slayer or small bands, but I am. And I was just Why? like, oh, my God, dude, you guys are that bad? You're as bad as I am? They're like, I've been as bad as you are and got up to this point where I just can carry around a bottle of vodka. I could just throw shit around all over the place and make you all f***ing drunk. And then I woke up and I was like, dude, did that really happen last night? And this is Slash's first ever Australian festival, he yeah, told me the other day. F***ing, that guy is the best guitar player. The guy's f***ing bad. I've been a big fan of his since I was like a little kid, since Appetite for Destruction came out. I'm 38 years old. So that makes him an old fogey too. You know what I mean? We're looking younger and younger. I think mankind is evolving into uh, we live hell longer and play better. Stop making me laugh. You're gonna make me lose my voice too. You made Randy lose his voice. Now you're making me lose my voice. You good mates with Randy? Oh, f***ing big time. I've known Randy since we toured in the old, old days. Like it was like he was doing merch for Buzz Oven. And uh, I was in I was in Sleeper's Best It's Death or something like that, yeah. and uh, me and Randy like hit it off and did a bunch of everything you could fucking think of like all the '80s children that were on tour. We were, f <laughs> we were, f dude, and like I had so much fun doing it. Like I wouldn't take it back for I swear to God, if you gave me five million dollars right now, I'd rather have my life experience with like people like that than the five million dollars. What have you got? What have you got here? Gun. That's uh, Freddie Corbin tattooed Oakland on me. That's the first tattoo I ever got. That's the wasted tattoo. That's a gang that I I was in. This You're gang. in a gang. I was in this gang. This gang's the Wasted Crew. Um, the PMA is Positive Mental Attitude. One of my favorite actors, Daniel Day Lewis, and he has a slice of pizza and um, a hatchet, <laughs> and it's Daniel Day Lewis and gangs in New York. So it's obviously a New York tattoo. I have this always and forever. My, my, my daughter's name is Lexi. I wish it was Lexi Pike, but we didn't know about each other. And she holds the key to that heart. That's a 13. That's uh, Freddie Corbin's like shop. And on Friday the 13th, well, they did this for a long time. You could get a tattoo for 13 bucks. Did it, Every, was it have to be like that or? No, 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 no. It, there's like a bunch of designs. This was, this was my design. Actually, my friend Chummy did this. Chummy's like, whoa. You know, we got the skull one, we got the uh, cross one. I'm all, do this and put some slashes there. I like it, I was missing this a tooth. Is a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, that's, that's Charles Bronson. It's the cherubim of Ezekiel. And awesome. Ezekiel, I actually believe he was seeing spaceships, but cherubim of Ezekiel is uh, like basically like the flags of Judah, which were the tribes of Israel. There was four of them. There was a man, there was a lion. There was a bull, and there was an eagle. Throughout my life, I've had nothing but respect for Pantera and like all that. I'm, I've been really good friends with Philip and Selma for quite a while because I grew up with the I Hate God dudes, which, you know, are in down. I grew up like Pepper Keenan, yeah, it's like a really good friend of mine. Yeah. I always loved Vinny and I always loved Dimebag and like totally. all that, you know. And, They're really nice you boys. Know, any, any sort of like 
Well, any sort of drama between like that, the two crews or whatever, has nothing to do with me. It has, you know, I'm just, I'm a neutral. I'm like Switzerland, man, and I like, totally. I love, I love people, and I love people on tour, and I love people who can do. Man, if you can, if you can do, like what we do as a living, do you, do you know how hard it is? Yeah. How, I mean, it's like, it's like when you respect someone who can box or fight, or it's like respect someone who can you know what I mean do the most travesty kind of thing to themselves and they have enough self-loathing to be able to punish themselves but then they have enough self-respect to like when it matters to like rise up and really really do something for people and then for other people not understand how they where it's a sacrifice they came from you yeah. know and it's like you have no idea what it's like to like you know, really, really, like your whole life, you're, you're punished your whole life, and you choose that path. And even though, like, it seems like you'll get millions of dollars, you'll do this, you'll have all these chicks, you'll be at the Playboy Mansion, blah, blah, blah. No, that, that ain't what it's about. No. no, it's about heart, and it's about sacrifice. Someone said it to me like a year ago on the last time we've toured. He's like, you know, no one really gets how much we actually have to give up. And it's not really until now. It's, this tour, I suddenly went, it really is. You kind of have to opt out of all else. And this is the life, you no, know? It's like when you say, uh, I'm giving 110%. 10% means you're giving over the limit of like what is really possible and it's awesome for other people all the time for you it like you know it can it, it can wear on your soul it can make you have crow's feet you know it can make it can make you frown it can make you get pissed off or go crazy but then again the people that can endure like I'll tell you what check out let me kill him that guy is the ultimate of of like him and like Muhammad Ali and like the, Bruce Lee, you know what I mean? Just people who endure because they love their art so much that they will do anything to sacrifice, they will sacrifice themselves as a pawn to be part of a bigger picture, a part of the king's, the queen's gambit to get the king safe, you know, like. And they bring peace to the world, I'm you know? Yeah, that's that fine. Like really weird. But the last time um, Motorhead played, they, they actually called a truce with all the bikey gangs and they were all on the floor and it was probably my favourite concert of all time because the entire place oh, was full of you. peaceful bikies. And consider, <laughs> yeah, considering I grew up with a lot of dudes that are like H.A. or like, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I know a lot of biker gangs and shit like that. No, That's another lifestyle. Oakland, it came, it came from Oakland, like Hell's Angels came from Oakland. And then, like, uh, I got the Rats, you know, the East Bay Rats. I, got, I know a lot of people around the country because I travel so much. Of course. You know, those gangs show up and shit. And then to, like, have have them all in the same place like that or something and have Lemmy be all, you guys are going to make peace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe he could make peace in the Middle East. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Send Lemmy, dude. Send Lemmy, man. Come on. Oh, oh, oh a lot of Obama, dude, yeah. or like well, whoever the. F well, they all get corrupted by all these sort of bureau bureaucratic all things, and they have to compromise. I like being in Australia, and just. Like, it's pretty kinda, awesome. Kind of kicking back, and. You came out here with Lamb of God last year, yeah? Yeah, that yeah. was awesome. Oh, I've been friends with Randy for f so long, you know, and then like, on top of that, the other guys genuinely like we've been on tour with them for, fuck, man, time flies by, and then ten years goes by, and you're like freaky, man weird dude or like the mastodon guys wait dude we toured for like two years straight like both of us on the same tour and and like they got huge you know like like all of a sudden they got this bam like time magazine oh, reviews yeah, and they, shit oh man those dudes like just just you know troy and braun and bill and, and brent um, all like kind of paid us back by being all, hey man, you guys gotta listen to High on Fire. You gotta listen to High on Fire. It's like it's like a good brotherhood thing when 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 you have each other's backs like that and you're a family. And it feels like that on this tour. It's like there's a lot of good sort of brotherhood happening here. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Kylesa, the Melvins. Yeah. You know, hey, I got to hang out with Dave Lombardo last night. Slayers, like not only like one of my favorite bands in the world, but like also. You know, just getting to meet some of their crew and, you know, that's 
Awesome. Got some nature up there. Oh, I got a whole bunch of bats that live in, live outside my room. It's awesome. I caught, uh, it, it was a tree bat. It was about that big. Yeah. And I put it in a bird cage and escaped the cage. And it was like that awesome. thin. It got out. And it was sitting next to my friend and I was doing a bong hit. <laughs> and I was all, <laughs> and like I'm all, Whoa. dude, don't move. The bat is like right next to you, like right now. Stop, don't move. And then I, dude, I had to catch it and like throw it out the window, but I caught a tree bat for, I, I had it for about a week. All this footage, like when I die, I want my daughter to be all, my dad was such a trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, it really boils down to that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, like if I watch a documentary on Jimi Hendrix and they like actually like get moments with him where he's like being himself, yeah. you know what I mean? It's so amazing to me. It makes my heart like, like, God damn, I wish they had more of that. You know what I mean? Ah!